Uh, welcome back from that feature on tech uh, incubation programs. My guest, Dr. Ayokunle Adem, is an experienced supply chain manager, client service manager and procurement. He has helped organizations with these operational costs and increase val or value offering to customers through a strong, valuable industry experience ranging from business management, supplier management, negotiation, procurement and cost management. He has a proven record or track record of improving the market position of a company and maximizing opportunities for financial growth. Many thanks for joining me, Dr. Adeyemi, on Business Insights. Thank you for having me, Justin. It is indeed a pleasure. Let me just try and break down, you know, what, uh, you know, supply chain finance is and um, how exactly it works. Uh, okay, thank you. Good morning, viewers. Um, supply chain financing, uh, I must say, is uh, a new innovation, not only in Nigeria, but in Africa generally. Yeah, is a sub-segment of uh, supply chain management, which um, enables suppliers to have access to quick financing of their invoices or their, uh, in order to increase their capital base. You know, so uh, as a result of that, um, medium, small, and uh, uh, micro enterprises have been able to participate in this new innovations in the field of supply chain. Uh, unlike the conventional uh, ways of raising capitals uh, through the commercial banks, the new, we call them uh, participating uh, financial institutions, that is what the CBN call them. Uh, there are funds that have been made available for them at the rate of 2%, you know, given to uh, microfinances, um, uh, SMEs, uh, medium enterprises at the rate of not more than nine uh, percent and so this is to really boost innovations among the supply chains uh, value, among the value chains in the in the field of supply chain mm -hmm. and looking at the track record of since when this innovation has come up it has really hit a lot of businesses in the rural area in businesses in the city those that have been struggling with uh, security loan as a result of some of the restrictions, some of the uh, regu uh, regulations or uh, requirements in getting all these loans. The, 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 the supply chain finances, those participating financial institutions have really helped in building out a lot uh, of uh, these uh, micro, small and uh, medium enterprises mm. to hit their business. Okay, let me try and get it clear, maybe in the lay terms now. For instance, I'm, I own a small businesses and I just got um, an invoice uh, to supply to maybe, uh, not necessarily a blue chip company, maybe a very well organized um, uh, business um, um, company. And um, what does it really mean? I'm giving an invoice of, um, to supply about um, you know, let's say about 10 million. Is it like um, I, uh, there is an automated process that I have to go to to get uh, fundings uh, to get the supplies and send to uh, the, the buyer per se or how is it really done? Is it like um, I have to interface with them one-on-one -on -one, or just how does it work? Oh, okay, the conventional way we all know is to go to the bank, to the commercial bank and then they, they assess your credit uh, rating they try to check out your collaterals. They try to see to pre-qualify you. They may even check for your uh, experience, years of experience in the business. They could equally ask for your existing financial statement to see how well you've been doing. These are the conventional way we know before. Mm -hmm. And then it could take like three months. It could before the approval comes, but the supply chain financing is like more or less like the digital system of financing mm. you know it uh, yes there are there are some checks and balances that comes into it as well not that the money will be disbursed just like that that some steps that goes on but what it simply mean is that you bring in your invoice and then the the company the participating financial institution we, we call the pfi gets to understand what supply you are into mm. you know to your buyers and then they stand in for you mm. you know they, they they liaise with your buyers and they go to understand that okay this is the dynamism of the supply mm. and you know definitely 
when you when you get a, an invoice there is always a payment terms mm. either 30 days 40 yeah. days or 45 days True. so they they stand in between they give mm. you the fund mm. to go execute the the project so or to, so to supply whatever you need to supply to mm -hmm. your to uh your clients and then from there they in their own perspective with your client their own agreement with your own client they they extend the payment day mm. instead of the agreement on, on the invoice of mm. 45 days and or 40 like days, days they extend it to like 60 days mm. like giving room for additional parameters that may come in to okay. you know so they allow you to get the fund bit by bit mm. to execute your to to uh, to meet your uh, your buyer's needs okay. and then from then after this you've done quite a uh, well of supplying mm -hmm. the, your buyer gives a kind of uh, approval that you've done the job to them yeah. and then the money is paid to the pfa and then your own quarter is released to you why they take some percentage from it usually what's the percentage like usually it used to be from five to ten percent okay just a uh, single digit yes single digits okay you know that the the, the 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 brain behind it or the logic behind it is just to number one e enable smes to be able to raise more fund mm. you know and then also be able to be prompt in delivery of their uh, the uh obligations the obligations to their buyers mm. also to f stay float afloat in mm. business okay you know and also to be able to innovate more mm. you know so because once you have we have a lot of value chains mm. it's been practiced more for those in agricultural sector because the economy gives him room for more people in agricultural sector mm. we call them value agricultural value yeah. value chains you okay. know even if you go to boi mm. you you know you find out that they attend more to those in agricultural sector okay. because of uh they have lots the of policies around it okay and because of the lot of value chains that is around mm. it also <laughs> there's also a provision for women as well how does that work oh the the, the women the women are given 60 percent opportunity higher than you, that of men yeah that, that, <laughs> that, that, that of women are better uh, economic well, is to or encourage is to encourage women to entrepreneurship? exactly entrepreneurship to encourage women to be more involved in entrepreneurship you mm. know because they, they will maybe probably they look at it that they are weaker vessel or weaker gender mm. you know and they felt that women are more innovative and they are better management of fund mm. you know as it were so they were when the cbm brought out in if you look at the report in 2000 and 14 yeah there, there was a report of 220 billion naira that was given out for sme to support smes mm. and uh, I, I i could recollect that 10 percent of that fund mm. was used for developmental uh, uh projects okay. like grants like uh, administrative purposes and the rest and then 90 percent mm. Of the fund which is in tune of 180 billion naira, was made available to this pfi the participative financial institution which we talks about now oh, under okay. the supply chain right. financing mm. you know so and there was a, a call a, a kind of um, instruction or agreement that was given to them because the cbn gave them the the, the facility at the rate of two percent okay and instruct all participating financial institution not to give it out more than nine percent okay. to the SMEs through the participating. And they still have like a seven percent float. Uh, well, aside the aside the uh, commissions mm. that will be charged from okay. the participating financial institution, right. but it must not it must not exceed nine percent to these SMEs. Okay, let's talk, uh, let's take it um, a step further now because it sounds like a very wonderful innovation in as much as it's still a bit novel here in Nigeria and um, in Africa, like you have said. Uh, all about um, the, is how uh, educated are SMEs, as in how aware are they about um, this supply chain financing? And don't you think we need to talk about um, building their capacity in terms of uh, technology and all of that so they can actually embrace all of um, this innovation uh, I, I must let you understand the structure of s uh, m that is the micro small and small medium and medium enterprise yes, the, the micro is the category of those that are between one to nine employee mm. you know why the small you get from 10 
two forty nine, okay. and then the medium enterprise you read from fifty to oh. two hundred and fifty. Oh. So if you look at the micro, which is in the majority, oh. you find out that the level of information or education is low, even to the entrepreneur in among them. Oh. So it's the, the capacity building you talks about is so needed with the micro mm. those in the rural areas those in the interlope those in the villages even those on our streets how many of them are aware of the informations that are available for their business to grow and so uh, somehow technology has really bridged the gap for those that are that have access to this technology so you find out that the difference between the the medium enterprise and the micro and small is very wide. Mm -hmm. You understand? Even the, the those in the in the micro find it difficult to assess the financial institutions. Mm. So most time you see them in their cluster doing what they call uh, cooperative or crowdfunding mm. or osusu. Yes, so, so, yeah. you, you understand? This is how they could raise money to fund their to business. fund their business. Okay. Not that they are not innovative enough. Not that they don't know the business, but because of lack of capacity building that you talked about, mm. it has made them to remain at the level where yeah, they remain. That is the still. So I quite agree with you that SMEs agencies needs to go That's into the village. Money. Yes, needs to go into the villages, into the rural areas to find a way of passing uh, information to these people. And I am of the advocate, mm. and I keep on saying that I think in our educational structure, from the elementary to secondary, they need to find out a way of incorporating this uh, subject into the system. All right. So that from elementary, from their younger age, they already have understanding of what to do if they need to go into, All right. into business. Okay, fine. Aside from this challenge of um, capacity building and um, lack of knowledge that you have talked, what, that, what other issues do you think can uh, mitigate against uh, you know, this uh, uh, supply chain financing and its growth in Nigeria and Africa? There, there, there are lots of challenges. Yeah, just the Number one is, is enabling environments. Okay. You will find that, that we have, first, we have about 39.7 uh, million SMEs oh. as a 2001 report in, in Nigeria. 39.7 million. Out of this 39.7 million, 7.1 million. 7.1 million don't have a space or an office to operate their business just because there's no enabling environment. Mm. Not only that, task purposes for the federal government levies on them. How, how do you levies on where you have not made provisions? Aside that, electricity, power. I must tell you that as at from 2000 and 14 to 2021, the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria spent 639 million naira on generating power for their businesses. Mm. So this this fund would have gone into the system if there is electricity or power supply from the federal government. They would have used such money to like innovate, to like boost the economy, to like even go for even more employment into the into the into the system. You know, aside that, we we, we have um, government policies, government policies that are not friendly. You know, in fact, if you pick states, there are some states that are doing well in SMEs. If you look at the chart, the total contribution to the GDP as at last as at last report was forty eight mm. percent. Mm. You know, but if you Categorize it by each state. Lagos State took <laughs> first. Yeah. At Lagos State had the seven point eight percent contribution. Then the, the next the next is Kano State with six point eight percent. Then after that you you have uh, River State with six point four percent, and yeah. then you have your State with uh, five point uh, uh, six percent. Right. You know each of these states. I think they need to come up with innovation yeah. to kind of give enabling environment to the micro, small, and medium, medium enterprise. enterprise. Okay, 
as we because of time now let's just take um, the final um, thought um, concerning this uh, issue because we need to grow uh, the even the nano you know micro you know small and medium enterprises in nigeria but um, aside from this issue of financing issue of capacity building uh we'll talk about issues of packaging and a whole lot also you know the devil's jago for in your in your final uh, you know postulation now uh, where do you think or where should what should be the immediate uh, you know problem that should be tackled for msmes to really grow in nigeria as we round off this is the truth is that I think the immediate thing is education. Okay. Yes. Educating, that is what we talk about the capacity building. All right. Uh, for, for the past four years, I've taken it over myself as an individual to educate people, uh, small and business owners in my community. Mm. I do free training. All right. As a matter of fact, last month I concluded and I equally supported them with some uh, uh, finances to to up is on the is on the newspaper is on the internet right. and whatever too. So ed education matters a lot mm. because a lot of people comes into the set of business haven't known what the business is meant to fulfill. Mm. So you find out that number one, people do not know that their customer is very very key to their mm. business. You 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 imagine when you are conducting training and you are telling them give. To give the feedback of mm. what the experience is, yeah. you you discover that a lot of them talks to their customers anyhow, mm. and then you tell them that without that customer, you are not in business. All right, you know. So I think education, uh, finding the cluster. We have seven hundred and seventy-four local governments in Nigeria. Mm. Let each of these local governments have a, a office for SMEs right. where they can come in and get more information or more training All right. in order to enable their growth. All right, Dr. Ayokonli Adeyemi, I'm sure we'll have to bring you back again to talk more because when we talk about small and medium enterprises, there's an array of issues that need to be tackled and we cannot yeah, just, um, correct, just you know, exhaust all of them in just one episode. But once again, and many thanks for, for sharing all of your useful you insights on uh, you know, so, uh, this uh, supply chain financing. We do appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Justin. All right, and that's the size of the show for today. That's as much as we can take on today's edition. Uh, Business Insights will return to your screen again, same time on Monday. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being a part of the show. Bye for now.